Hello, this is part two of our lesson on H bridges. And our goal in this lesson is to control a DC motor using a microcontroller. This H bridge in this lesson is a shield that mounts on top of the Arduino microcontroller. And we're using an Arduino Uno, but uh, I've also used a Mega, and it worked just as great with this uh, method. So remember, an H-bridge is a technique that shows a, uh, allows a microcontroller to easily control the direction and speed of the DC motor. So as you remember, here's our H-bridge here. And if we have S1 and S4 closed while 2 and 3 are open, we notice that the positive side, uh, one side of the motor is to the positive side of the power supply, and the other side goes to ground. And then if we open S1 and S4 and close 2 and 3, then we reverse the polarity, and now we're, that will reverse the direction of the motor. So there's many methods to construct an H bridge, and we discussed the relay module, and now we're going to talk about the VNH 5019H bridge. So the 5019 works with 5-volt uh, logic, but it can also work with 2.5-volt uh, logic, uh, anywhere from 3.5 to 5-volt logic, and of course we're using 5 volts in our logic level from our microcontroller. And this motor driver, um, integrated circuit, can drive a motor that uses from 5.5 to 24 volts DC, and it delivers a continuous 12 amps uh, per uh, channel, and a 30 amps peak. And it can use a pulse width modulation frequency maximum of 20 kilohertz to uh, control the speed of the motor. So um, this uh, shield that we're using features that 5019 um, motor drivers that's, that's developed by ST Microelectronics, and it's designed for harsh automotive environments. We're using uh, to control, this is our motor here, that DC motor we're controlling, and what we're doing, actually doing is controlling a two-ton jack to make it go up and down. Here's our uh, simplified schematic diagram. Notice that we have the, uh, the shield on top of the microcontroller, and um, we have um, a floor jack here. I noticed I put 12 volt supply here twice, it should just be once. And I got the, the signals going to the floor jack to control the speed or the direction of the, of the floor jack going up or down. Uh, we have uh, active high switches that we're monitoring on the uh, microcontroller. We have a blue button and a red button. And when the blue button's pressed, the blue light's going to come on, and the red light comes on when the uh, red button's pressed. And so the red switch controls the raising of the platform, and the blue switch controls lowering it. And here's uh, a summary of our connections. So this is a big picture here of the 5019 shield and the connections to the external power supply and the 9-volt battery. So remember the code is compiled as machine code and embedded on the microcontroller double, double EEPROM uh, integrated circuit. So the uh, Polo Lu website discusses the details of the shield and I, I put that there for your convenience to look to uh, look at the details about uh, the technical aspects of it. And also uh, we used uh, software from GitHub to get us up to speed very quickly, and it's up there in the public uh, realm for everybody to use, to use the shield in a quick way. And, but always remember that if you, um, this will get you up and running fast, but if you're going to use this code, this is reusable code, uh, you have to go through it line by line if you decide to use it for production. Always keep that in mind. So here's a little snippet of the code. At the top of the program, we identify the pins used by the microcontroller, we initialize the state of the buttons to zero, and we include the 5019 shield header file, and this helps simplify our work tremendously. We initialize the baud rate to the PC at uh, 9600 bits per second. We also initialize the motor driver for controlling the DC motor. And we set the LED signals as permanent outputs and the button signals as permanent inputs. So in this part of the program, the code operates in a continuous loop. We monitor the buttons, and uh, they're active high, and if they're both low, the user hasn't pressed any yet. 
And I was using this to print out on the screen as a troubleshooting guide as, as I was developing the system to make sure that the, uh, we were reading the switches properly. And also, we don't want both buttons to be pressed simultaneously, so I, I put some code in there to check for that. And it's always a good idea if you're writing code to add code to your uh, program to check for improper conditions that a user might might try to do. And that will happen, and you don't want the system out in the field to find out it does something bad to your system. So you want to add that to your code to uh, help stop that. So here we're checking the state of the push buttons. Remember, low, that means it's not push. It's an active high. High means that uh, the buttons were pressed or a button was pressed. And this snippet of code shows how we move the jack upward. I might call it here forward direction. I was using it for actuators earlier, and, and it just as easily works with actuators. And uh, I print stuff out to help develop the code. And uh, this code will ramp from from zero to a maximum forward in just seconds, and it checks for faults as it does that. This set of code here reverses the motor. Um, it, uh, the for loop starts at 400 and decrements until reaching negative 400. So this is uh, this shows the the shield on top of the microcontroller, and I have a, a, a URL there for you to look at the user's manual which is very detailed and it's, it's, it's a lot of information there. But this uh, 5019, uh, as I'll demonstrate in a little bit, is a plug and play motor control solution. And as we mentioned earlier, earlier it can handle up to 12 amperes continuous per motor. And it can handle two motors at one time. And so we're just scratching the surface of its ability to control motor and to get things started. So here's a picture of our setup. Uh, demonstrating the VNH5019 motor shield with a microcontroller to control the floor jack. Here's our floor jack, here's our 12 volt power supply, here's our 5019 shield, here's our microcontroller, and here's our buttons that interface with it and our battery powered for our microcontroller. So there you go.